Oh, hi everyone. Welcome to my awesome boosting guide. Now, this video isn't going to have many visuals. I will try to put a few in, but this is mostly one that you can just listen to. So go and get yourself a lovely cup of tea or coffee or other beverage <laughs> and settle back and just enjoy, I guess. So the UK has been freezing. I've been hugging snowmen just to stay warm recently. There's nothing wrong with boosting. It's a valid way of actually getting your character to a higher level quite quickly. In a nutshell, boosting is where you use a high level character to level a lower level character. The aim of the boost is to obviously reduce the amount of time you need to spend getting to level 60 or whatever level you want to achieve. Some people charge for boosts in individual instances and this can cost you one gold to six gold. Obviously depending on the person and the instance. Now if we're talking about boosting you probably need to know a bit about the group bonus in the game. So, if you have three or more people in a group, then you will receive a group bonus, which adds a little bit of extra XP onto every mob you kill. The experience gained is shared between all of the players in a bit of an odd way. If you have a group with three level 20s, for example, the XP will be split evenly. But if you have a group with two level 15s and a level 20, the level 20 will actually receive more XP. I suppose this makes sense in a funny sort of way, because Blizzard don't want the level 15s leveling up too quickly. Additionally, you will get more experience in a group of four or five than in a group of two if you are grouped with a level 60 or a high level player, even though this seems kind of counterintuitive. But again, it does make sense if you think that you're getting the group bonus, so don't be afraid to go for a bigger group of four or five people. Another technique that you can use is called tagging. This is where a player such as yourself will attack a mob and the mob will be finished off by a higher level player like a level 60. Now as long as you are the one who attacked the mob initially, you will get a full amount of XP. So you can use tagging in certain circumstances. It's generally speaking a very nice thing to do. Although I will say very occasionally if you kill a mob for another lower level um, was sort of killing, they might get a bit annoyed at you, especially if they don't really understand this mechanic. But all experienced players will have a sort of intuitive sense <laughs> of how this works. So before we properly begin, it's important to know that lower level characters will attract a lot more enemies to attack you. Now this is generally because lower level players will have a higher pull range for higher level mobs. So if you are in an instance and you are a low level, make sure you stay well back, possibly with the casters, as your pull range will be much larger, especially if you're a fat Horan. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> no, lots of love to the Torrens. The minimum level here for the following instances is actually the minimum level. You're going to really struggle to do the instance if you are the minimum level. But nevertheless, if you are being boosted, it's absolutely fine. Obviously, you're not going to be the one doing the damage. So whilst any level 60 can boost, the best boosts probably come from mages. 
mages can do area of effect damage or AOE, which is kind of awesome if you ask me. And warriors aren't bad. My main is a warrior and I've done a few boosts in the past and they've always worked out quite well. Although, obviously, warriors aren't as good as mages. The only AoE we have is Whirlwind. Let's look at a few notable instances for boosting. On the Horde side, Ragefire Chasm is great. It's from level 10 to 18. There's also a bunch of quests that you can do here. On the Alliance side, the Stockades aren't bad, but they're level 15 to 30. If your Horde Shadowfang Keep is really awesome, and this is level 10 to 27, a wonderful place to get a boost because there's lots of really lovely uh, items here. But when a player gets to levels 26 to 45, they unlock Scarlet Monastery. Though the minimum level here is 21. The instances being the graveyard, the library, the armory and the cathedral. Getting back to boosting, it's possible for a skilled mage, such as Little Bunny here, to pull almost every mob in, for example, Scarlet Monastery Cathedral. Obviously, this takes practice and certain talents, such as Magic Absorb, or rather, every time um, a spell is resisted, the mage will get a refund of mana up to 5%, so this is very, very nice. So, the mage can basically get a lot of mana every time they resist a spell, and this will enable the mage to do a lot more damage. Mages can also use a low level arcane explosion to pull the mobs, and they can also use things like their mana shield and ice block. Anyway, I won't go into too much detail, there are other videos that cover this in more detail and they're really fun to watch. Can you believe that Maradon is, well the minimum level for Maradon is actually 30. Now the recommended range is 46 to 55. Level 30 is very low but I want to go and um, basically get boosted in this place just to see how it works. Also bear in mind if you do go to Maradon and you get any frost resist items or you get any nature resist items, you probably keep them for <laughs> Nax and AQ40. After Scarlet Monastery, a really good place to get boosted is Zulfarak. That's from level 39 to 47. I won't go into too much detail, but after Zulfarak, there's a wonderful place called Sorrow Hill, which is in the Western Plague Lands, uh, just uh, east of Chilwin Camp. And this is a place where there's a lot of undead and in this place, if you can pull a bunch of the mobs, use the tagging method we used earlier, and the level 60 kills for mobs, you can very, very quickly gain a huge amount of experience here. So this is a wonderful place to get some good experience. And as a mage, I'm sort of planning on going here quite soon. Bear in mind, you can also um, get your Argentor commission, which would be wonderful when you get some Argent Dawn reputation. So to finish off the guide, I recommend when you get to about level 45 to 55, the uh, Temple of Atar Hakar is very, very good, also known as the Sunken Temple. There's also other instances which are sort of great to finish off and just get to level 60 such as black rock depths and a few others which you can probably see if you have a look right now <laughs> remember if you do go to black rock depths and you're level 55 you can also get attuned for molten core now there's another aspect to boosting that's rarely talked about in fact a lot of people probably wouldn't consider it boosting 
when you get to level 60, if, for example, you join a guild and you go to Molten Core, there will probably be a lot of drops that nobody really wants because they've all got more, well, they've got superior armor. So if you can get yourself in a lovely Molten Core raid, then there's a good possibility that you can get a lot of really decent equipment. That's just one thing I thought I would mention, guys. And now, as good as boosting is to play Devil's Advocate, make sure that you get your class quests done. So, for example, if you're a druid, make sure that you can um, get, for example, your cat quests done because no one really wants to see a level 60 druid who can't turn into a cat, right? <laughs> what are we going to pet? The bear? I mean, I guess the bears are quite sweet too. Anyway, guys, huge thank you to you. If you enjoyed this, please do let me know and I might create more content like this. Hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and consider supporting me on Patreon. That would be incredibly appreciated. And I shall see you in the next video. Bye.